Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for April 2015. Go to my website, aspiritualspark.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my personal live coaching. Also to see more about my new 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine, both of which are available on a sliding scale, and both of which are intended to help you navigate the astrological waters with more ease and grace, co-creating wonderful things with the universe. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter and you can become part of my community. So what's going on in April? Goodness, we have a lunar eclipse in your sign. We've got that lunar eclipse. I've been talking about it for months because eclipses don't just energetically happen on the day that they happen. They energetically happen sometimes weeks before they start happening. Weeks, sometimes up to six weeks before. So I've been talking about this for a while, February at least, March definitely. April, very strong, into May, and really these eclipse cycles run for six months. So sometimes it takes about six months for the full story of the news that is coming in now to be told. So there's different time frames that we look at, but, but by now, by April 4th, by the actual event, you might start to have some idea about the story that's being told. It's very likely, and if not, then very likely in the month of April you will. So we've got a, a lot going on at this eclipse besides just the eclipse. So we have a bunch of layers of intensity. Uh, we've got the total lunar eclipse at 14 degrees of Libra. It's in your sign. Anytime you have an eclipse in your sign that makes it more likely to affect you, it will affect you more depending on the degree of your Libra planet or planets. So the closer to 14 degrees your sun or rising or moon or any other Libra planets you have, the more likely you'll have more dramatic effects from this um, eclipse. And if you were, so if your birthday is between October 3rd and October 9th, it will likely affect you the most compared to the other birthdays. Um, but again, you know, it, we don't, I don't know how this is exactly affecting other planets you have. You might not even know your chart. You could have multiple placements in Libra and you think, okay, well, that's not close to my sun sign. Well, maybe it's close to one of your other Libra planets. planets. So you can um, search online for a free birth chart and look at the degrees of your planets and see. This is how you can further your understanding of the effects of the eclipses. So that's going on. Lunar eclipses eclipse something out. They close a chapter. They bring endings. When Uranus is involved in 180 degree um, opposition. This is a challenging angle, and Uranus is the, this planet of surprises, nerve jangling, jostling type of a planet. When you have it in an aspect that's challenging, 180 degrees opposing that lunar eclipse, that brings surprises and things out of nowhere and erratic behavior. And again, especially for you middle degree placements or you birthdays from around October 3rd through 9th, although even the first through 11th could, could feel stronger um, effects from that. You've got, you know, people acting crazy in your relationships. Maybe you're the erratic one. There's things that come all of a sudden, things that come swiftly. Things that happen at eclipses are often non-negotiable or really usually non-negotiable. There's not usually this plan laid out before you, hey, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Usually these things come and you either don't really have any say in it or if you have a choice, it's like you feel like you don't have a choice kind of thing. They just, it comes in. So now all that's happening with this 90 degree angle, it's a T square basically to Pluto. So Pluto is, is making a 90 degree angle with Uranus and is making a 90 degree angle with the eclipse. So Pluto rules birth and death and transformation and rebirth and the rising of the Phoenix from the ashes. So all of that, all of that is going on on that day, but not just that day, this whole eclipse season. This is major, major profound change. It has the chance to be major profound change for anyone, but especially signs that are involved directly in this aspect. So Aries, Capricorn, Libra, you're likely having this hit close to one of your planets. Maybe, if not, it's definitely in your sign. So what kind of changes can this bring? Lots of changes in um, how you see yourself, what you're presenting to the world, what, um, what image you've had, um, 
definitely changes in relationship, lots of changes in relationships. It could be one key one, could be just how you approach relationships in general, or it could be both. That could be why the relationship is changing because you're changing so much. Many of you, early Libra placements, some of you middle Libra placements, uh, are going to have this also have a strong effect on your home, your actual physical home, your um, birth home, your family of origin, your family, because Pluto is doing this, this T-square down here at the bottom of your chart, which is the fourth house. So a lot of people are going to be moving. A lot of people are going to have someone leave their house, someone come into their house, a lot of changes involving home things. For you, some of you middle and most of you later degree placements, this Pluto is is off a little bit more into your third house and this rules your relatives and usually not as much your mom and dad and kids, although the fourth house could cover mom and dad and kids, so really any of your relatives have potential, um, you know, association with this eclipse for you. But the third house also involves your car. So, and your transportation and your mobility, your m physical movements. So you want to very much guard your car, guard your body, guard your um, decisions when you're driving. I know this that you've probably heard me talk about this before because anytime I see any kind of possibly sketchy aspect that's anywhere near that transportation area, that I'm always calling out for what I would hope would be common sense, right? And, and I'm not making a judgment because we all have lapses in what would be common sense sometimes. Um, but not texting while driving, not talking on the phone while driving, um, not doing whatever else, doing your nails while driving. <laughs> This, this, this sounds funny, but this is this goes on, and this is the time when you have to be so much more careful. And even if you are behaving yourself in a, a focused uh, way with good awareness when you're driving, other people might not be. This is kind of a, a wild um, combination of energies. So you have to be extra careful and extra aware. Wait at stop at stop signs and green lights just a second or two more. I guarantee several of you are going to contact me and say, oh my gosh, I waited just for a second more and this tractor trailer came plowing through and I totally would have gotten smashed if I didn't stop. That is the kind of energy, but if you give more awareness to your circumstances, it can help you. So we have all that going on at the beginning of the month. Now that's happening April 4th, but we know that full moon energy often you feel that in the days leading up to it and since this is the eclipse you've been kind of feeling this already anyway so what else is going on this month there are other things going on although this is very much dominating the energy we have april 8th jupiter is turning direct jupiter is a guardian planet it's the planet of expansion you probably always see me light up when i talk about jupiter it's my ruling planet as a sag and i just love it and it brings optimism and joy and buoyancy and um, effervescence to wherever it is in your chart. It has a 12-year cycle, so it moves through a field of experience for around a year. So Libras have had most, okay, your Jupiter has been moving through your solar house or your solar sign of the 11th house. But that doesn't mean that that has been accentuating the 11th house for all Libras because many middle degree Libras and late degree Libras, you have still had this Jupiter accentuating your 10th house. So you'll start to feel the sparking up last year for the 11th house, like it's coming, the energy is coming, but it's, um, it's still kind of in the 10th house. So it's kind of like, I'd like to talk about um, something nice when I when I think about Jupiter so like the smell of lilacs because in April and May the lilacs are blooming and if you smell if you have a lilac bush on your block you know that you smell that down the block so that's what it's like if you're a middle to late degree Libra you're smelling the lilac lilacs from down the block as it relates to Jupiter expanding your 11th house which is the house of groups and teams and organizations and humanitarian efforts and the internet and social media and 
social circles and acquaintances. This is also the house of your big dreams, really big dreams. So when you have the great benefic moving through your house of really big dreams, it can be a very auspicious time for you because you have that support in creating those things that are like so far beyond what you thought you could do. You have that power now. And if you don't quite have it completely strong there yet, middle degree um, and later degree Libras, it's coming for you later in this year. So you can smell the lilacs down the block, but for you early degree Libras, you've got the lilac bush right in front of your face. And you can smell the fragrance of Jupiter expanding that 11th house. So for the rest of you, it's expanding the 10th house. And the 10th house is the house of career and work and life purpose. Also the house of um, father type of energy, relationships with authority figures, things like that. So since Jupiter has been direct, whether it has been in your 11th house or, or it has been in your 10th house, I mean, since it's been retrograde, December 8th, Jupiter went retrograde. So from the summer until December 8th, it was going full bore, just expanding, 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 bringing possibilities. Then December 8th, it went backwards. So if you had projects last year that seemed like they were really cooking up and you're like, yay, this is going to go somewhere big. And then it stopped or it slowed down or there were hindrances. This could be related to this Jupiter cycle and you will start to notice the closer you get to April 8th and the more Jupiter regains steam after April 8th that those projects that were really steaming last year that kind of went sleepy, they're going to come back and you're going to know that Jupiter is involved in that. So work projects, team projects, group projects, anything you're working on for big picture, big vision, um, things will start to come alive in April. So that's all really exciting. Then we have on April 16th, we have Pluto going retrograde. Okay, so we have Jupiter going direct on April 8th. And on April 16th, we have Pluto going retrograde. Pretty much at any given moment, we have one or multiple planets retrograde. You will hear me talk more about the personal planets being retrograde, like Mercury, Venus, and Mars, because those affect us more. They're not retrograde for as long. We tend to feel them more in obvious ways. These outer planets going retrograde, they're retrograde for four or six months sometimes. And so there's always something retrograde. So if you're ever looking for a time when when isn't something retrograde, it's not gonna happen pretty much. Maybe I remember a couple of days it happened. I don't even remember what year it was. I was like, whoa, everything is not retrograde. That's a couple of days. It's rare, but it doesn't matter because everything is acting on something and we are com complex. We are as complex as the universe itself. Each individual is as complex as the universe itself. There's no such thing as a superficial person, even if it seems that their behavior, that there's just nothing else there, right? It's not true. They are a complex individual. We all are. And you can see this when you study the stars and you see how all of these pieces are just acting in all these different ways and how they, what their individual effects are and what their, uh, you know, combined effects are. So Pluto rules going in, it rules the underworld and it rules the inner world. And it actually thrives in retrograde. So when Pluto is in retrograde, which it will be from April 16th through September 25th, this chunk of time is amazing for uh, internal cleaning. It's like internal spring cleaning. Cleanses, juicing, diet changes, just clearing out inflammation. And this is the best time. Um, chemicals, detoxes, all of these kind of things. Things like I saw something really cool in a natural health magazine. It's, it's a new kind of a spa that has, um, for your membership, you get that um, access to that machine that kind of jiggles you somehow and it works all of your muscles. And then it has this detox sauna and then it has the Kangen water that has a, a pH that allows your body to heal. So things like that, if you have something like that near you, this is a great time for that, getting the insides all on track. And this also has to do with the mental space anything you can do to mentally clear yourself, mental clearing. So then April 18th, we have the new moon in Aries. So I get all worked up whenever all the planets are going into Aries because it's springtime and that's this forward moving energy that's Aries. 
So in March, when the sun was getting, when, well, when Mars and Venus were moving into Aries and, or had moved in at the end of February, then the sun was going to move into Aries. There's all this forward movement, this momentum. So I started talking about vision boards. Now this day, April 18th, is the best day to do a vision board for, in the entire year except for your birthday. Two days out of the whole year to do vision boards where your vision boards will have the most power are on your birthday and on the new moon in Aries. And that is this time. So even though the astrological new year started at the end of March when the sun moved into Aries, the kickoff party is when the new moon is there. And this is this is your time. So this energy is very strong for you in relationships. So perhaps with the other energies we're talking about, some of your relationships crumbled or went away. And this energy brings in new relationships. So it could be it could be new chapters of old relationship, like with the same person, or it could be new relationship entirely. But it's bringing new cooperation, new sense of harmony, all of these energies. So it's a much lighter energy than the energy at the beginning of the month. Which, as I say that though, remember that events involving eclipses can happen at any time in the orb of energy. So you could have the total lunar eclipse manifestation at the end of April, even though it was, it, it happened at the beginning of April. So, so barring that, the energy is much lighter towards the end of the month. So we got this new moon in Aries, then um, between the 21st and the 22nd of April, we've got multiple transits, Mercury con conjoining um, Mars and Taurus, and then both of these making a trine to Pluto, and a trine is a favorable angle. So we talked about the square and the opposition, which are more challenging angles that are associated with that eclipse. And then we've got this favorable angle with Pluto. So this is a fantastic time for you to schedule meetings with people you're collaborating with, for you to work things out if you've been having trouble along the lines of the eclipse, like people that you've been involved with that are telling the story of this eclipse for you or, or reflecting it for you. This could be a good time to try to make some peace or make some sense of things. Um, it's great for strategizing also. That's a key word for that particular transit. So then April 22nd, there's also a sextile between Venus and Jupiter and Jupiter is the great expander. It expands everything it touches. So, so it's in this favorable angle to Venus, which rules love and money. So it's a sweet spot here at the end of the month. Um, and there's a lot of different ways this can come up. For some of you, this can come up with work opportunities and someone will introduce you to someone or something involving work. Some of you, this will involve a, an opportunity to travel or something in broadcasting or teaching or speaking or learning or different countries. Um, then on April 26, we have Venus making another sextile, this time to Uranus. So Uranus, when it's in a challenging angle, can often bring surprising behavior, often that is challenging. But when Uranus is in a favorable angle, the odds that it will bring behavior that is inspiring and brilliant and a breath of fresh air, those are increased. So we have this energy for the second half of the month really um, clearing up and lightening a lot, quite a bit. So I can't see what's going on in your chart. I would like very much to, if you are one of these people who has been tremendously affected by the Uranus and Pluto and the lunar eclipse and any of these other combinations, I will be so happy to assist you in strengthening the weak links in your internal space so that you can have an easier time with the reflections. That's my department. I would like to help you with that. So you can go to my website, aspiritualspark.com, or click on the link below this video. Definitely while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter, become part of my community. Definitely while you're there, check out my 28-day virtual coaching program. The sliding scale for that starts very low. It's very accessible to everyone. Um, I want anyone who's motivated and really wants to have something they can do every day that brings more positivity and clearing and um, paradigm shifting. So that's what that's for. And I hope you have a wonderful April and I'll see you next month. Bye.